I'll now show you how to create a new Juno3 VM and integrate it with the Juno3 GUI so that you can build your own topologies like this. Now the recommendation is that you use a brand new Juno3 VM. In other words, one that's not already connected to a Juno3 GUI using say a local integration. So in this example, I'm gonna to go to File Open. I'm gonna import the Juno3 VM and I'm gonna call this Genus 3 VM Remote 3 and import the Genus 3 VM. Please refer to my other videos or the Genus 3 documentation. If you're not sure about Genus 3 VMs and the integration between the GUI and the Genus 3 VMs, this is an advanced video and assumes that you have some knowledge. So once you've got a Genus 3 VM imported, go to the settings of the Genus 3 VM and add an additional network adapter. You're going to need to have IP connectivity between your GUI and the Genus 3 VM. So I'm gonna bridge this Genus 3 VM to my local network card. In this example, it's bridged to my Realtek USB Gigabit Ethernet card. So in other words, bridge Genus 3 to a physical interface. I'm gonna start up the Genus 3 VM. So in this example, I've got three Genus 3 VMs running within VMware Workstation. Now you wouldn't typically do that. I'm just doing it here to show you what's possible. So once it boots up, go to the shell and view the IP address of the Ethernet interface. So Ethernet 2 has this IP address, 192.168.10.6. So in the Genus 3 GUI, I'm gonna to go to Edit Preferences, go to Server, Remote Servers, and add that new server. So 192.168.10.6. So I'm just gonna leave the name as an IP address. The important part is that the host IP address be configured. I'm gonna click OK. The server is now added. Click Apply, click OK. So now in my GUI, I have a connection to that new Genus 3 VM. Everything is green, so that's good. I'm gonna to go to Edit Preferences and add a new router to that Genus 3 VM. So I'm gonna click on New. I'm gonna run this Cisco iOS router on the new Genus 3 VM. Notice I'm configuring this as a remote server. I don't have the Genus 3 VM integrated locally and I'm not running it using a local server. In other words, the Dynamips server in Windows. It's a remote server. Click Next. I'm gonna use an existing image, click Next. I'm gonna name this router C3725192168.10.6. Click Next. This router requires 256 meg of RAM, click Next. I'm gonna add some modules to the router, click Next. Add some WIC cards, click Next. An idle PC value has been found, that's great. Click Finish. So notice I have four router templates. So now I can drag the new router to the workspace. And it might not work because I wanna show you something else that you need to be careful with. You need to configure routing within Linux if you have your Genus 3 VMs in separate subnets like I have here. So I'm gonna start this up. 
open up a console. I'll show you in a moment how do you fix the routing. But let's get this router booted up. So this is router four. Interface fast ethernet zero zero. I'll, I'll no shut to the interface and configure an IP address of 10.1.3.2. Create a loopback interface of quadruple four. And in this example, I'll enable OSPF on all interfaces on the router in area zero. So I've configured to this side of the link. I need to configure router two. So on router two, go on to interface F0 slash one, no shut it, IP address 10131 slash 24 mask, and hopefully I can ping 10132, which I can. So router four can be pinged now from router two. Notice there the echo replies. So router four should be able to ping the loopback of router one, assuming that the routing is working. So let's test if router four can ping the loopback of router two. At the moment it can't, so make sure that our routing is configured right. Notice we haven't received any routes, but now the relationship has gone to full. So show IP route again. Routes are received, so let's see if this works better. I can ping the loopback of router two. Can I ping the loopback of router one? Yes, I can. Can I ping the loopback of router three? Yes, I can. So that seems to be working okay. So I've got a full working topology, but be careful. You may have problems pinging from one device to another if you don't have your routing configured properly within Linux. What you need to do is if your Genius 3 VMs are in separate subnets, is manually add a route in Linux to the remote subnet. So in this example, I added a route by using the command sudo route add hyphen net 192.168.1.0 with a subnet mask of slash 24 to the local default gateway. These three GNS3 VMs are in the 192.168.10.0 subnet. But this GNS3 VM running on a separate server is in a separate subnet. It's in the 192.168.1.0 subnet. So what I had to do on this GNS3 VM is also add a static route to the 192.168.10.0 subnet. So notice both these Genius 3 VMs have had static routes added to them to allow connectivity between the Genius 3 VMs. You've got to make sure that your Genius 3 GUI can get to all the Genius 3 VMs. So you have to have IP connectivity between your GUI and the Genius 3 VMs. But you also need to make sure that you've enabled routing between your Genius 3 VMs. In other words, you've got static routing enabled. By default, the default static route is gonna to point to the NAT interface and not to the additional Ethernet interface that you've added to the Genus 3 VM. So as an example, on this Genus 3 VM, the default is 192.168.91.2. That's pointing to the NAT interface and the Ethernet 1, which is the NAT interface. Ethernet 0 is host only, Ethernet 1 is NAT, Ethernet 2 is the bridged interface. So I've added a static route out of Ethernet 2 for this Genus 3 VM. You've got to have IP connectivity between your Genus 3 VMs. So as an example, this Genus 3 VM can ping the remote Genus 3 VM. In this example, it can also ping the remote Genus 3 VM, but be careful, you may have to add static routes between your Genus 3 VMs, otherwise the routers will not be able to ping each other, even though they directly connected to one another, and they won't be able to exchange OSPF routes.
So be careful. Add static routes on your Genius 3 VMs. In this example, it's working because the remote side has routes added. But be careful. If you have problems where the two routers on a directly connected link cannot ping each other, make sure that you've added routes to the Genius 3 VMs so that they can communicate with one another. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.